Now I've already disconnected the pin, the clevis pin, for the slave cylinder push rod. This is the release arm. This has to be removed in order to get the transaxle off. All it is is one nut up here. You take that nut off and take this off, this release lever. It's on a master spline shaft. It'll only go into one position. Here's the observation we want to take note of. How little it moves right now. This is connected. Later on when we put it back in and before I connect the bearing, this arm is going to move a lot because it won't be locked in. When it locks in, it'll only move a little bit. The other thing too is I'm expecting that we're going to see this position further over here because when we put the new disc in there it's going to be thicker, it's going to push the diaphragm spring out, push the bearing out, and this release arm will be further over here. I took the nut off that release arm and just lift it up and there it is. That's what keeps the transaxle locked on. Now this shaft is free to rotate and it'll come right off that pull type bearing. Now the clutch release bearing, we put this little tag on here, little tie wrap. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off, but it says, do not install bearing into cover. For procedure, see the bulletin. So what we do not want to do is accidentally or on purpose lock this into the clutch cover because that's just going to make extra work. But to start this process, if you can see it, this bearing, the part that rotates, it's off center. This is called self-aligning. Right now it's up that way, so I can take the bearing, snap it, and it will move and reposition. So for the installation, all, I want to, all I'm asking to do, suggesting to do, is that you just visually try to align the bearing with the carrier. This is going to put this snout on the center line of the input shaft and make it easier to install this on the transmission. So we're going to slide it in. What we're going to do is pick up the bearing with the fork and just for demonstration I'll put the release arm on. So this is engaged, this is released. Engaged, released. Now if you remember when we took the transaxle off and said so we have to remove that arm, if you leave the arm on it only goes so far, so the whole clutch is still locked onto the bearing. You're not going to be able to get it off. But as soon as you remove that shaft, it comes off. And this bearing is a non metallic bore, so no grease. Goes on dry. There it is. Look where the ring is. I purposely put it so that the split in the ring is pointing down. There's two little fingers up here that hold the ring. I think this offers the best lineup. Remember, I pre-aligned the bearing, kind of put it right on center because it's going to come in here and lock. I've got the bearing positioned correctly, but I've got the ring where I think it's going to be in the best spot for that bearing to lock in. Now the transaxle is installed. We just put a few bolts on it and I put the release lever on. Now let's take a look at how far the release lever moves with it disconnected. That's at least twice as much as it did. So now to connect the bearing to the pull type clutch I need to push this lever back as if I was compressing the slave cylinder. So I gotta go that way. You heard a nice click, took a little bit of force, a little bit of an awkward angle for me. We're actually up here on a ladder doing this. And there it is, locked in.